This is Sophia Hacking for Interdops and Hacking SAP. And in this video, I wanted to have another look at the data analyzer in the SAP Analytics Cloud. So you might know that data analyzer has been around for a while now, but it was always a bit hidden within uh, SAC. So you had to go to a certain URL to activate the data analyzer, for example, with uh, a content link like uh, this example here where you could create a, uh, a link to this data analyzer and then it would bring you to uh, a page that would activate the data analyzer now wh what has changed in uh, release q4 of 2021 is that as it be brought back data analyzer here in the menu bar so a long time ago it al already was in here then they took it out for some reason and now it's going to be back into the menu bar and that that's a good thing because i think a lot of users of as you see don't even know about the existence of the data analyzer and that's really a shame because it's a very powerful tool within as you see as it resembles analysis for offers and of course the the, the backs wrap uh, that we had in uh, the bw environments of course uh, it's, a, it's an easy ad hoc analysis tool built in SAC and uh, which you can use uh, without having to build models and such. So it's a good thing they bring it back into the model, um, sorry, in, into the menu. Um, and I thought, okay, it, it's probably good to have another look at what we can do with this data analyzer. So let's start with the beginning. Um, you can find this here in the, the, the menu on the left side. Make sure that in your roles you have data analyzer activated, otherwise you won't be able to use it. So if you go to your BI content viewer row, for example, there is an item called data analyzer. Make sure this is uh, marked. This is checked, this execute option, then you can make use of the data analyzer. So we now have two options here. We can either use a data source or we can use an existing SAC model. And that existing SAC model, that can be either an input model or a live model. Or, and that, that's a more interesting uh, feature, you can use a data source like a HANA view or a BW back query. So let's say I click on this. Then I get a pop-up where I can select my system type, well, either BW or HANA in this case, and the connection um, that you have available on your platform towards such a system. And what then happens is that you get access to all the views or the queries that are, are available for, for your user account. So for example, this is a, I think this is a BW system. And as you can see, we have a lot of queries that we can uh, can use here. So let's have a look at a sample view. Let's open this and we go into the data analyzer. If your view or query contains prompts, then you will get this pop up, uh, which you can use just as you would use this in analysis for offers and make a selection, something like this, for example. I don't know. To filter your data set. And now you see the default view of, of your results here. So most important here on the right side, we have a designer panel, which will give you all the available measures and dimensions coming from this source and I can use these icons to add them um, to the result. I can also switch this to the columns. I'll keep it in the rows, or I can use drag and drop here on the right side to change the order. Well, I can do a couple more things here. So first I can change the display options of the dimensions. So let's only show the description. And also interestingly, um, 
we now have this new option to select the specific description format in case there are multiple available. So in, in my example, yeah, we only have short, but potentially you could also have some uh, longer uh, text here. Uh, let's also do that for the plant. Let's see what option we have here. Let's make a description. All right. And then for the columns, there we have the measures. Well, I only want to see sales and the sales forecast. So let's take those out. And you see it, it's immediately refreshing based on the selections that I just made. I can also pause that um, by using this icon here, the auto refresh. So if I take that out and I s do a couple of selections here, I can refresh them in one go. See, there we go. Well, let's put that back like this. So now we have our table. Um, we have some more options here. So we can do a quick swap axis and to turn the table around. Well, let's do not do that. Go back. We can arrange totals parent notes below or not. So you see now this total here, it's now below the other results, but you can also turn that around and make it uh, appear above. There's an option called compact display. Um, so with this, you can display the dimensions that you see here in a hierarchical way. So let's show you that. So now you see first the country and I then can expand that into the plants. So it's a bit like a hierarchy. And of course, well, let, let's take that out. You will see the totals here for Germany in the Germany row and then the values for the individual plants uh, below that. And eventually we have suppressed zeros. Well, I don't think I have any examples of that here. No, but that's when you have zeros on a full row, then that row will be uh, suppressed. And I can do similar uh, things here in uh, the columns. Well, we have some um, sorting options that we can uh, apply here. And also some display options in the build menu itself. You can also take out the left part of the builder by clicking this icon. And here with the pencil, you can change your data source. So unfortunately, it's only possible to use a single data source in the data analyzer. So you would have to use multiple tabs if you want to run more of them at the same time. If you want to go back to your prompt, then we have this prompt option here on top. It's the same icon as we already knew from, uh, from the SEC story. So here we have our prompt. We can make all of this full screen. We have an info icon telling us something about um, data updates of, of our data source and technical information and also the prompts that we just set. And we can add some additional filters here. So I can, for example, add a filter on country and make sure I'm only filtering on these two countries now. Well, finally, there is an option to save whatever I did here in the so-called insight. So you can save that in uh, the SSC repository like this. And then later on, you can continue your work from here or you can send this insight to some other user, uh, for example. So another thing that has been changed since um, we had a look at this last time is we now also have the styling menu enabled here for, for the table. So that means that we can adjust 
the look and feel of the numbers that we see here. So I'm now only looking at the sales key figure. I can adjust the scaling and also make this in case. Um, well, I don't have a unit or a currency. Ah, I do have it, so I guess I can also make it appear in the cells if I would like that. I can take out the decimals. Well, I don't have any uh, negative values, but I could make changes to that as well. So that's nice that they also introduced the styling. Um, unfortunately, there's no styling yet on coloring of fonts, for example. Um, I, I always make this a bit more uh, darker. It, it's kind of hard to see now this 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 grayish uh, font color. Um, but yeah, that that's probably something uh, that will be added in in the future. Yeah, and some other features that you have within the table um, are available via the context menus. So if you right click here, then uh, you can add these built-in calculations. You can also do uh, the sorting. So for example, if I want to sort from a larger to smaller uh, values, you can activate that from within the table itself. Um, you can also freeze the rows and columns if you'd like to. And of course, there's this option to, uh, to do an export of the data set uh, into Excel or a CSV. I mentioned earlier that you can either use a live source or you can choose for uh, a model that you already created in, in SAC. Unfortunately, you cannot switch between that from this view. So now, because I started out connecting to a live system, I don't have the option to select a model on SAC. Uh, so if you want to do that, Let's save this insights and uh, like this. Then you would have to go back to data analyzer from the menu and then select from an existing model and then you get a different selection option um, where you can select your, um, your model that you already created on the platform. So what's very interesting is that SAP is integrating this data analyzer more and more within the tool and also within the SAC stories. So we already are familiar with the Explorer mode, which you can enable in a widget in, in, in SOC stories by just checking this check mark here in the builder. But in addition, we now also have an option to enable data analyzer. So with that, you can jump from uh, a visual like this directly into Data Analyzer without having to select uh, the source that you want to use. So let's have a look how that then works. So first, uh, the, the old Explorer, it's still there. So you can jump to Explorer. You will see the same table as we just had. We have this menu on top where we can add or remove dimensions and set filters on dimension members and switch between the measures and on the right side we have a designer where we can make further adjustments or we can um, even switch this into a different type of visualization like a bar chart and in the end you can save all of this as an explorer view and bookmark that view so you can reuse it later on well that's explore in addition we now have this open data analyzer and it, it actually does roughly the same thing yes i will leave, leave the story it will now open data analyzer and it will take over the data source that we had in uh, the table that we uh, just saw plus the selections that were made in that table so starting point is similar as what we saw in the story, only now we have the data analyzer features like this menu here on the right side, where we can again select additional 
measures and dimensions. And eventually we can use the save option to save this as an insight. And then the insight will be uh, a standalone object on the SSC platform. And that's of course a bit different than the explore view that we have in the explorer, which is basically part of the bookmark on a particular story. So that, that's really a different approach and a different, yeah, a different artifact uh, within the SSC uh, environment. So let's have a look at the roadmap of Data Analyzer within SAC. So on the roadmap site at sap.com, you can uh, see the items that have been worked on by the development team. There is an item here called Data Exploration. So there we also see the, the, yeah, the adjustments that we just saw. So we can make adjustments to the measure, look and feel now. We can access it through the menu bar and for Q1 next year, well, there are some options regarding measure selection. Well, we already saw opening the ana analyzer from uh, a table in SAC. And if we look a bit more ahead in time, well, for Q2, there is not much on the planning. Q3, neither. Well, yeah, so for Q4, we see that there will be um, an option to open the data analyzer from table in the Explore view in SEC. Yeah, so it probably will be some kind of a mix between the Explorer and the data analyzer or something it's it's not really clear how this will eventually uh, manifest well there's also an item about showing charts in data analyzer that that would be welcoming as well and using models from SAP data warehouse cloud in data analyzer well that would also be a nice addition here yeah so i think looking at this um the solution that we now see in an sec with the option to use either a data analyzer or the explorer from from the sec stories that that's really going to be a confusing thing um, i'm not sure how to explain to users when to use what and looking at what we see here in the roadmap it's it's not yet completely clear what it's going to be. So I would prefer to have just one solution. Um, either remove Explorer and, and put Data Analyzer uh, in the place of that, or the other way around, I don't care. Um, two solutions that do roughly the same, yeah, that's never a good idea. Now we've seen that in the past with all the Bob J tools, and now it almost feels like we get something like that within SEC as well. So uh, let's hope that it will be uh, different than that. Also, I'm a bit surprised that the lead times are this long for some very basic and, and also very important features in, in Data Analyzer. I think, still think it, it, it's a very useful tool within SEC to have but yeah, looking at this, this roadmap, um, yeah, it, it's something for the long term and, and not really something for the, for the coming quarter. So apparently the priority is still low for this and, and that's really surprising for me. And, and I'm also a bit afraid that this will lead to more confusion by uh, end users of SEC. So, well, let, let's see what happens in uh, 22. For now, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.